That's okay. If we could all just rise and say the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to welcome everybody to the May Staten Island Borough Board. Um, we're going to get started. Uh, CB2 is going to be missing tonight because they have their Youth Service Awards and uh, Council Member Nizigo's office should be here shortly, but we will get started. Um, okay, so uh, if I can have a motion to accept the minutes in your packet. Okay, Nick first, Dan second. Okay, uh, if we have no correspondence. We're going to move right on to uh, our presentation um, from the New York City Department of Environmental Protection. They're going to give us a brief presentation regarding the citywide storm water management program. Uh, next month, we actually have SCA that is coming. They're going to give us an update on some of their uh, larger projects on Staten Island. So we're going to turn it over to DEP. Welcome. Thank you for having us. My name is Ibrahim abdul -Mateen. I'm the Director of Community Affairs at DEP. I'm joined by my colleague, who you know well. Can you introduce yourself? I'm Frank Montano, the Borough uh, Coordinator for uh, Bureau of Local Affairs. So um, I'm here to have a, just a brief conversation with you about um, what we're calling the Municipal Stormwater, what is it called? Municipal Separate Storm Sewer System. It's a lot, that's probably just say MS4. And I'll give you some context about that. Um, and, and just give you a sense of how that, this is just a brief overview. We've been going to every borough board to kind of let them know what this is, it's a, um, and the importance of it to give you, a, and then ask questions, because we're in really a, a sort of an information gathering phase right now. Um, if you could click, Frank. Um, so basically, all of you, most of you know that there's a significant amount of our system that is combined that's where our sanitary flow, which comes from our, our houses, our buildings, um, all of the stuff that we use that goes through our buildings into, our, into the sewer, mixes in most of the city, mixes with stormwater, the water that hits the, the roads and the streets. Mostly in, in sort of the edges of the city, which we'll see, and in mostly in Staten Island, actually, most of Staten Island, those systems are separate. So that, um, so we capture stormwater and it's set those separately to the waterways, or separately out, outward, uh, um, as opposed to combining with our sewer flow. Does that make sense to everybody? Um, I know that it's a little bit um, convoluted, but I guess this shows you what a combined system looks like. When there's an overflow, which is an important piece, which we call a CSO, these are, this is a, when there's an overflow where there's a lot, a huge rain event, where, um, where sanitary and combined and, and the stormwater flow mixes and there's a lot of it at a short amount of time, it overtaxes our system. That's when you get what is a CSO, which is a combined sewer overflow. That's when you have untreated water that goes through the, the tr treatment process, but it doesn't, get, doesn't necessarily get treated because there's just too much of it, and it goes into our waterways, which is what we want to avoid. So we have a separate program called, called a long-term control plan that's in most of the city that's managing how we improve, how we convey, and how we manage stormwater and sanitary flow so that we prevent CSOs. This is something different. So we have a permit with the state for the, for CSOs, and then now we have a, and now we're, for the first time ever, we are, the, there's a permit with the state to manage stormwater. So any water that hits the ground has to be captured in some way, shape, or form, it has to be dealt with, managed, um, we have to make sure that we account for it. We want to minimize all of the pollutants that could get into our water bodies as much as possible. This includes things that we know about, like floatables, but it also includes random things that, like chemicals and other things, oils, all that kind of stuff that might be on our streets and our waterways that we don't necessarily know about. Um, or like, like you know, dog, dog poop, that kind of stuff. Like all sorts of weird things get into our waterways. Um, so most of Staten Island is, is, uh, is separately sourced. So I'll show you a map, which is a really good map. So the blue areas are direct drainage into the waterways. You see that very much at the edges of the city. The white areas are the combined areas. So it roughly maps to where the older parts of the city are. The pink areas are where the separate systems. It's primarily Staten Island, the edge of Brooklyn and Queens and obviously little bits and parts of the Bronx. So our new permit that we're, that we're talking about with the state 
really gives us the responsibility to capture the stormwater and, or figure out a plan for the stormwater on those areas. And just like anything that the city has, any type of um, you know permit that we have or any type of new legislation, <coughs> um, we we have to think of what our responsibility is first, like what's in our house first. So this is a citywide permit. DEP is acting as this as the entity within the city that's managing the permit for the entire city. So all of these agencies that own some property that have some of that if you will, skin in the game at some of those edges and some of those pink areas, they also have to develop a plan directly to, for, to us and we're working with them to capture stormwater on those areas. Um, and, I'll, and I'll say later, entities like NYCHA, um, Port Authority, MTA, they have a separate MS4 permit with the state. They're, they're an authority, so they already have to figure out some way to capture <coughs> stormwater on their location. Um, so a lot of times we get that question about where, where does NYCHA fit into this, or where does you know other entities fit into this? Um, so we, you know, this is a big deal that we have. To, we're managing this entire permit. It's a um, it's a really huge multi agency, massive task force that is taking a lot of energy, um, but it's actually a really good thing. So what does it mean? Um, essentially, what it means is that we have to develop a stormwater management program, um, a comprehensive plan, and it's gonna ha it has to include these. 13 areas, public education and outreach, public involvement and participation, mapping, illicit discharge detection and elimination. So for example, we were on um, parts of Coney Island, <coughs> we were over, over, over by Coney Island. Parts of Coney Island have both separate and combined areas. So there's outfalls that are both. And when we were on Coney Island Creek, we were noticing some illegal discharges. And we know for a fact that there's some illegal discharges in Staten Island as well. So part of this, this permit is mapping where all those illegal discharges are. It's literally doing an audit and finding out where those things are, who's, who's putting them in, and making sure we cap those things and get rid of those. Um, construction site stormwater management, stormwater runoff control. That's a big deal. It's obviously a big deal <coughs> for north um, side of Staten Island, where there's, where there's construction. The south Shore. South Shore as well. Um, so that's going to be, that's, that's why this, we're bringing this to you guys to think about we're not. We're still mapping out all of these pieces and how this, what this means for us. But this is going to be. Um, it's going to affect some of the ways that people are doing business and currently doing business now. Also, um, post construction, which is a, another big deal. Pollution prevention, good housekeeping for municipal operations. That's why we're partnering with those other those other city agencies to really look through. You know, what what is D, what buildings does, does DCAS own? Where do we have bulkheads in the city? Um, DOT has um, lots of facilities around the city. Uh, and weird places, weird lots that we own that we just don't know, you know, uh, what's what's the, what it, a plan for those areas specifically. Um, Department of Education is also included in this. All the places where we have some control over, where we have some leverage, we have to develop a plan for. Um, industrial stormwater sources, and that, you know, um, where does that where would that apply in Staten Island? Where there's industrial, lots of industrial. West Shore. West Shore. North Shore, the North Shore toward this. Magnus Harbor, that way. Yeah. Um, and hopefully they'll stay that way, but you know, you never know, right? <laughs> uh, we like industrial areas. Um, and then control, another big area is control of floatables and settable, settable solids. This is basically trash, things that are floating around, um, and we're gonna get to that a little, in a little bit. Monitoring assessment, how are we gonna track ourselves, how are we gonna keep, uh, what are our indicators of success that, are, that we're gonna apply. A lot of these things are, actively in development as we speak. So this is not something that we're coming to you and saying, we figured it out and this is the permit, this is what it's gonna mean. We're in the phase of figuring this out as we speak right now. Um, record keeping, annual reporting, and fiscal analysis. Uh, we're in, we have a sort of, we have to deliver a, a document to the state of what our plan is um, by 2018, right? So we have some time, because this is a big project, this is a big, there's a lot of mapping that takes place. We have to get data from the federal government, from the state government. Um, we have to understand really what, you know, some people have are registered, some businesses are registered for some type of use, but then actually use it for other things. So we have to get a real holistic understanding of what people are really doing on their land. Um, and so that there's a lot of inputs that are going into this before we can turn this out. Um, so what's the timeline look like? Um, we have a draft annual report 
um, that we're actively figuring out what it's going to look like that um, we're putting together now. And a lot of this is we learned from our, our CSO program, the LTCD program, which um, you know we did a, a lot of work on. But we learned that we should do a lot more public involvement and public engagement prior to. So we've been um, meeting a, with a lot of uh, uh, key stakeholders. And last night we met with the Natural Resources Protective Association here out in Staten Island, um, walked through a lot of these elements. Um, they had some specific questions with, uh, for us about um, the, the, um, the wastewater treatment plants on the, on the island. But it, the, the conversation evolved to talking more about this new permit. And I think what we're really doing, it was a really positive meeting and a really um, productive meeting. And um, I think that that's the type of conversations we're going to continue to have because those were getting tons of feedback and tons of information. I just came from today. We had a meeting with some of the leading um, um, stakeholders around the, there's a swim coalition, which is a stormwater infrastructure matters um, uh, citywide coalition that keeps us accountable on a lot of things. They were giving us very specific, very <coughs> awesome feedback. So as we go through different pieces of this process, we're actively getting feedback. And you know, a lot of these sites, we have to go and monitor what they're doing. We have to understand what they're doing. And in some ways, we're going to be relying on community members to actively tell us about what's happening and what they see. So hey, Brian, this, this applies only to city-owned properties? Not, not, it's a citywide permit. The reason why I say like we're we, part of the citywide permit means one of the first phases is understanding our impact first. Right, just like with the buildings thing, we have, you have to clean your own house first basically. before you go out to the Precisely. Public. We can't tell everybody what to do until <laughs> we know what the heck we're doing. And you know, we, I'll give you an example. When we did our, um, and from 2004 to 2010, we did an extensive review and replacement of all the lead service lines, city owned buildings. Right? Now, since the stuff that happened in Flint, since 2010, there may have been some buildings that we've acquired for various reasons. We're doing another review, right? Mm -hmm. So those types of reviews take a long time to understand because you know we have a lot of property and a lot of, of our footprint is pretty large. I'm just wondering, like we have a lot of places where there are grade changes, and for whatever reason in the old days, you know, we let people pipe water through retaining walls onto adjoining property. Like a school on like a road or whatever in that effect. Um, but that would have been run. You're talking about like stormwater? Yeah. Is that, how do you Runoff. Using existing creeks? No, it just no, goes onto somebody else's property. It goes onto someone else's property. That's an interesting. Uh, that's and then there's a lot, I mean, there's right by the water feeds. I mean, there's buildings that both are wide. It's on Tokyo Road, it's on the West Side Metro Road, where the elevations are different. Um, these properties, for whatever reason, were either given or The law, Joe, didn't pass until 1989, so if they're older buildings, you weren't required to retain no, your own water. Well, the ones on watch are newer. It's a good question. It's a great question. Somehow, <laughs> the school is older. Okay. So the yeah, school the school is older, older, so they, they, they can, can get, get away with it. But I'm just wondering how do you, because it's picking up a lot of junk as it mm -hmm. goes from property to property. See, that's the kind of stuff we've been hearing from folks. Like, that's great. I'll bring that back, and that's something that we should look at. It's uh, probably all pre permit, though. That's what it is. It's well, I, mean, I think the ones in Westley are. <coughs> maybe I know in South Shore we have people doing that. They run gray water right to the street. The DEP turns that. And that's another thing. Our, we had some yeah, of our, true, we had some of our experts just last week in San Francisco. There was a national gathering of folks talking about um, capture of gray water and some of the. There's not like consistent legal understandings of uh, and just consistent standards about how to capture gray water on a municipal scale. Yeah. And so there's like deep conversations happening across the country about the best practices for that. And we're sort of learning from everybody about that. Seattle, um, um, San Francisco. We have some, a lot of good experts that are thinking about this stuff. Um, and you know, there's a lot of really interesting thinking about that. Uh, because like, you know, we, we're gonna have more intense storms that are gonna be more frequent. Right, that's the reality of climate change and the dynamics of that. Um, and whether you call it climate change or not, I know that you're not a fan of climate change. But <laughs> the first meeting I was ever at, it's yeah, not Whatever you want to call it. I was gonna, first meeting I was ever at, you were there. I was working for 
Mayor Bloomberg, and I sat down, and before I could even say anything, Joe said, before you talk, I don't believe in climate change. <laughs> it was great. It was, it's a story I tell every day, all the time. <laughs> it made me a tougher, stronger person. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, uh, okay, so I, and, then I, and then we have to, you know, um, this is a back and forth with, the, with DEC. There are regulators on this. They are the ones that are, um, that are permitting this, and a lot of this stuff has to do with them developing their own process at the same time so that they can monitor us in an effective way. So there's not like this, there's not like this has been done before. So there's a lot of learning and give and take in this process. So you're learning how to talk with DEC now. Well, you know, we do our best. But do they don't know what, uh, are they, are they <laughs> I think they're are creating they the same standards. I think they're creating standards. They have their own sort of programmatic things. Yeah. I think our dynamic is different because of the nature of our reality. There's very few cities in the United States that have this many different fronts of them, right? Like you, you know, maybe Seattle or some other places that are just that dynamic or have this many um, different connections to the waterfront. But New York is very unique, a city of islands. So I think that they need to sort of develop some best practice on their end as well. Um, you can go to the next one. And I think specific to Staten Island, um, one of the things we're working on with um, United Activities Unlimited, we're doing a, a, a series of cleanups, Frank, if you want to talk about that a little bit, um, what the plan is there. So we've worked with UAU in the past um, uh, to promote the Clean Trees, Clean Beaches program. Brian Mercada runs a program. Um, we'll be having kids going out to various locations doing waterfront cleanups, as we did in the previous years. We uh, go around locations in Staten Island with rigs, pickers, wrappers, and cleaning up trash that washes up along the shoreline. We also have another small group of students that will be work that we collect from. Are they working with College of Staten Island? Is that right? We work with College of Staten Island to uh, collect through water samples all around uh, the move out areas and other, other water bodies. And the e waste disposal event, I'm not too familiar with that. Yeah, we're, we're just trying to elevate the conversation around waste and about political and about trash. And that's sort of looping that in. I think the core of it that makes me most excited about this, about this approach, that's sort of a holistic look, but really engaging young people on the island, um, particularly within this, the middle area with the water sampling. Um, we wanted to get some citizen science involved in this, and we wanted to get the young people, because Staten Island is really the place where the MS4 permit is gonna be, it's gonna affect everybody, right? Like everyone's gonna, it's, you may not know about it, but from the perspective of the city, the, the entire island is relevant in, in, in play. So it's, it's part of it is getting, it's not just getting young people to see themselves as scientists, which is really crucial, but it's also getting young people to see themselves as stewards of the water body around where they live. And that, I think that, that is super valuable. And um, Brian Lakata and Frank and um, my colleague, Mikkel, um, we've been sort of coming together to think through like, you know, how do you do this in a way so that you change people's percep perception? Because like I've mentioned in some of these other places, you go to Chicago, they have a lake. You go to like uh, Portland, they have a river. Um, New York, we have all different lakes. I mean, we have not lakes, but all different water ways that water touches land. And so there's not <laughs> one water body that everyone has like one attachment to. So what we need to do is have everyone sort of look at their backyard and their neighborhood and their local water body and have some personal relationship to it. Um, you know, you go to like the, the Chesapeake Bay, they say save the bay. And everyone knows what that means. But that's not the same thing here. So we have to be a little bit more dynamic and think longer term about uh, how we connect people to their water body um, and their watershed, their local watershed. So that's kind of the approach here is to really guide people to sort of understanding that their actions have a relationship to the, to the water body. Abraham yeah. Bloody is willing to be preparing a curriculum for the Department of Education for the We are definitely work, that's a great point. With our education <coughs> unit at DEP, they are intimately involved. Part of one of the elements of the permit is the public education piece and part of that is deep working with schools and with educators and with young people about for that very reason. Uh, because we do a really good job of explaining young to children and school, school age children where your water comes from, but we, it's sort of like we do a great job of the input, but we don't do a great job of the output, right? And so now we're really trying to firm up how we discuss that output and make sure people understand it's a whole, a whole system and a whole cycle. Um, I think let's go to the, um, yeah. So I mean, that's really all I wanted, the, the, the core stuff, I and mean, we can ask some questions, and to the extent that I can respond, I, I just came from a very technical briefing with a bunch of our advocates, so I, I might have remembered some of that content. Um, and I, it's, 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 it's not rocket science, really, it's just 
It's just us figuring out like reporting standards. Um, how are we like? Where are we testing? Like our sort of our testing standards. We already do a harbor study that's been happening for over a hundred years or about a hundred years, where we go to different points consistently across the uh, all of our all around the harbor um, in our waterways, and we test the water periodically with our CSO. We've added some um, testing um, sites. I think they added two in Staten Island, out off Staten Island. I'm not exact, exactly sure where that was, but as a part of this, there's other testing that we're going to be doing, um, and we're going to be learning more about the water and, and blue belts as they become more. Those are crucial parts of our infrastructure. Um, so that I think that's uh, that's you know it's a it's an evolving conversation. I think you know one of the things that we just got some feedback from one of our advocates that was saying. Um, we're going to meet building managers, building, um, not just building managers, but sort of property managers um, and, and companies that manage large properties. We really, we have to do a lot of work with them and training with them. So we're going to be, we're working, we've already reached out to trade associations. We presented to um, lots of the, the, the real estate board and all those other entities because really, and some of the developers to really map out what does this permit mean for them and how can they work with us and us work with them to figure out how do they change some of what they're doing on site to make sure that we capture everything as possible. Will the regulations be changed? I think- For the developers, for new development? I don't think, I mean, I think, I don't know if it'll be changed per se. I mean, there's definitely gonna be some, they're gonna be more stringent. We're gonna have to capture the rainwater, right? So- Yeah, but right now they give them permits for dry wells. We all know they don't work after the year. Correct, so that's, that's part of what we, that's part of the sort of ongoing construction and then post-construction. That's, that's why we have to do a deep dive with those. You said post-construction. Yeah. So what happens is when they get filled up and yeah. people don't clean them, okay, people start to run it out to the street. Yeah. Okay, we see it all over. So a year or two years or three years after development in <clears throat> these like little cul-de-sac communities, um, we have a problem with runoff. Now the runoff was collecting all of the oils on the street, any chemical that's on the street, anything else that's on the street. Yep. We also have a lot of problems in the beach area with uh, connecting storm drains into the sanitary drains. And whenever below we Highland, get below Highland, between and it, what happens is is that when we get a severe storm, it overtaxes Oakwood Beach, and then it pushes back, and then anybody. So that's who, exactly what we were talking about last time. Any yeah. storm or any rain, just go below Highland between, say, Manhattan Street, Rockaway, down by Villa, and everything's. But it goes. But it also it goes all through. It goes through Midland Beach. Yeah. It goes all yeah. starting with Midland Beach, going all the way through, to all of those. Uh, uh, you know, let me let me let me get from. Uh, were, you, were you there last night? I mean, we, we know, you don't have to, this is yeah, something no, no, I've been no. working on a long time. I just want to hear from you that you're gonna look at these locations, no, no, that's this it. Is, we, we were, that's what I'm saying, is that that was the impetus for the meeting okay. last night. That was literally, we had a citywide meeting about the CSOs, Okay. and then um, a woman, Linda Cohen, um, was there, and she pulled us aside and said, you need to come talk, and she said exactly those same things. And, and that's what was created. I mean, DEP is definitely aware of this. They and know we, it they, they know, know it. My office and they know it from our office. office. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. been a problem. Actually, I could tell you when it's been a problem. Since the Northeast of 2010, that's when it really reared its ugly well, head. The other because people it actually said 93 also would start it. It's just starting out in government. But, <laughs> I know, <laughs> but I know in 2010, that's when we really seen it. Then we seen it again when we had that 10 inch rain that time. And then for Sandy, <clears throat> any time it was like a dramatic thing yeah. because they all go in and then, you know, once the system, you know, is at capacity, it pushes it all back. And then we have where even someone who doesn't have an illegal connection, if you're if you're downstream from that person, then you get it, then you get the waste in your yard too, even though you didn't do anything wrong. I mean, I had a woman who used to call and complain constantly, and then um, the local guys on DEP said that they were gonna come out, and all of a sudden, we had a mea culpa because she knew she had the illegal connection. When we told her, well, you know, we know this is part of the problem, and we're gonna have a sewer project, she says, I don't know what you're talking about. That's the most craziest thing I've ever heard about. And then suddenly, when she thought she was gonna, suddenly she was like, 
oh, really? They're going to they're gonna come to my house? And I said, well, it's going to be a good thing because hopefully we can find out what's solution wrong. Solution to the problems, please. <laughs> yeah, we <laughs> found the solution before they came out. The Oakwood Beach plant <clears throat> treats 100%. I know all the numbers and everything. Like I said, this is something we've like been involved with for a long time. Because when you have the, the stormwater that enters into the sanitary line, now it backs up. It's going to yes. create a backup for that just yes. that small community yeah. until mm-hmm. it can reach the yes. pipes. Could. Right, because they don't have the problem here. Well, we're, we're actually, there is actually a project that is going to do that on Seaview Avenue. They're creating a trunk sewer that will store, that will retain some of the water and then gradually let it out. But, you know, that we project. We need a sewer treatment plant on the South Shore. We've been asking for it for 20 years. Because we asked for it for future development. And now it's, the systems are all the tax. We all know that now. Where are you going to put it? Listen, there's plenty of land down here in West Shore. Well, you know, if actually we got rid, could weed out some of the connections, we wouldn't be mm-hmm. overtaxed. We yeah. wouldn't be at capacity, but it's Each just because of the extra development. for future development. Yeah. I was going to say last night, uh, John Fatino, the uh, acting deputy commissioner of uh, Real Waste Treatment, he was saying that we were running about 50% capacity. No, it's, it does have plant. capacity left in it. It's just when we get one of these bad rainstorms, that's what happens. Right. It, you know, because we had the figures. I think it was, you know, built for, they built, when they built it, they built it with development in mind. So they yeah. built it to handle double what it handles. But when we have these rainfalls, it's more than, you know, what it's supposed to, it's a lot more than what it's supposed to be. Any questions for folks? Anybody else? All right, thank you gentlemen for coming. Much we appreciate, appreciate it. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always love coming to town. I just had a third child, so that's why he's speaking English. Well, congratulations. You can agree that there's uh, no going to walk. <laughs> Never agree with that. You're going to be walking out. Well, this is, my, this is what I say to him then. I was like, I don't, maybe there is no global warming, but there's still going to be days over 90 degrees. Increase, there's going to be increased uh, sea level rise. <coughs> so all the symptoms of global warming are still, you're going to still have them. Whatever you go, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> we could use one sun. now. We need, we need Can you the sun. Okay. Back yes. And run a farm on definitely, definitely. Okay, do we have any old business? Right. <laughs> no. Any new yes. business? No. Yeah. Okay, meeting adjourned. Thank you everyone for coming.